Nolan Catholic High School in Fort Worth was the site for a Class 2A TAP State semifinal matchup between the Bernie Geneva Eagles and the Robert Barron Academy Stars of Houston. Barron Academy is a Jewish Orthodox school forced by their own faith to play at 1 p.m. on Friday, March 1st of 2013 to avoid playing on the Sabbath, which begins Friday at dusk to sundown Saturday. What transpired was simply amazing and almost a repeat of the year before when the stars were glowing worldwide for forcing TAPS to reschedule their games to avoid controversy. Barron Academy defeated Dallas Covenant Christian before falling in the state title game to Abilene Christian last year. So with the stars aligned again for another Final Four appearance, would the outside pressure get to them? You don't really feel the outside pressure during the games or anything like that. We try to keep our heads down and just play and not to get distracted or anything like that. So, no, I don't feel any of the outside pressure like that, no. It's weird playing during the day like this, but we had a big uh, crowd support, so that made it good. Not as much drama this time around since TAPS changed the rules in October, allowing schools to reschedule for religious reasons. The only unforeseen problem this year could be perhaps an extremely long game, like five or six hours. That couldn't happen, could it? Barron Academy had trouble offensively in the first half. Quite a few turnovers, missed shots, but the Stars' defense kept them in the game. Burning Geneva started clicking offensively as junior forward Jake Martin scores down low for the Eagles off the nice bounce pass from Logan Ward. Burning Geneva senior guard Christopher Buddy manages to steal the ball away from Zach Yoshore and dishes it to Nick Thornton, and the senior guard lays it in artistically for two. Then just before the half, Thornton hits the fadeaway jumper for a three-point lead, 26-23, Bernie Geneva. Albert Katz heaves the ball across the court, but it falls short. Eagles by three at the break. Yoshora starts going to work for Barron Academy in the third quarter. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. The putback finally goes. Bernie Geneva head coach Jeff Cruz had to like what he saw out of his guard play. Jake Martin pulls up and hits the shot, 28-25, Geneva with just inside five minutes to play in the third quarter. Yashor was the go-to guy for the Stars. Check out the jumper. Barron down one, 28-27. Mostly when Zach Yoshur was going, it was working for us. Um, you know, we we're trying to get Zach the ball, obviously. I mean, he's, he's an excellent player. Um, you know, he's somebody who will play at the next level. And, you know, so once we got him the ball, basically it was kind of put him in situations where he can make good reads and, and be as successful as, as he could be. But back comes Geneva, junior guard Cade Leader with the nice bounce pass inside to Nolan Townsend and watch the senior score three the old fashioned way, the hoop and the harm. Townsend nails the free throws and the Eagles were up four, 31-27 midway through the third quarter. Yanni Schiff is a great shooter, but the junior forward is slightly off target here. But Drayton Ratcliffe is there to put it back off the glass for the rebound and two, stars down five. Midway through the fourth quarter now and watch the dribble penetration and the passing abilities for Barron Academy. Katz with a nice dish to Ratcliffe and it's a two point game. To the final minute of regulation, game tied and Barron's Yoshura is open for two more as the Stars took their first lead in a while, 39-37 with exactly 52 seconds to play. After Geneva tied the game at 39, Barron Academy would settle for one last shot before regulation. Yoshur on the dribble gives it up to number three, Albert Katz, who looks for an open man only to get it back and miss a short range bank shot. To overtime we go, tied at 39. A missed opportunity, but still plenty of daylight for more basketball, right? Katz would quickly make amends in the first overtime as he darts into the lane and lays it up for two, 41-39 Barron Academy. Then it's Katz again as he works in close for two more. The layup makes it 43-39 stars with 1.15 to play in the first overtime. Back comes Geneva as Nick Thornton picks up a loose ball as he steals and scores the bucket and the Eagles were down one, 44-43. Following a barren free throw, Thornton decides to go coast to coast dribbling through traffic and he lays it in for two to tie the game at 45 with eight seconds left in the first overtime. Closing seconds now, and Yoshur puts up the shot. It's no good, so we go to double overtime, tied at 45. Yoshur goes to work in the second extra frame as his shot is off target, but Drayton Ratcliffe is there to clean it up for the first bucket of the second OT. On the other end of the floor, Zachary Jones picks up Geneva. The shot from inside the paint is up and good. So exactly who was keeping up with the Jones? Well, Zachary works his way to another close range basket. 
Closing seconds of the second OT, game tied at 49, and Thornton appears to be online for the game winner, but it's in and out, no good, so we go to triple overtime. In the third frame, it's Yoshur on the dribble. He has the ball stripped away by Thornton, who then goes coast to coast for the layup, Geneva up two. Yoshur and Katz make some huge free throws in the third overtime to give the Stars the lead, but Geneva would not go away. Jones, working hard under the basket, gets the bucket and the foul, Jones missed two free throws, leaving the door open as Barron Academy came back down the floor. Yoshur, shot, no good, but there was Radcliffe for the rebound as he was fouled. He made the first free throw, but missed the second. Now Jones was fouled on the play, but this time he made both free throws for a three-point lead, and Barron Academy was going to need a miracle shot to force a fourth overtime. Radcliffe inbounded the ball, and the Stars got it quickly to Katz, who found Yanni Schiff who appeared to just heave the ball up from behind the three-point line, but check it out as it goes, all net. Game tied and we were headed to quadruple overtime, 56 all, wow. When I let it go, I knew right away if it had a shot. I mean, I knew I wasn't completely off and felt like the ball was in the air forever. And I just was hoping it was gonna go in and it ended up going in. We just had to push the ball and get people to spot up and we got kind of got in trouble and couldn't find anybody and, and Yoni popped up into an open spot and, and hit the shot. We pushed him out a little further. We kind of got there a little bit late, but you know, he knocked it down. That's a big shot. So we go to the fourth overtime or eighth period, if you will. Still daylight, but the game was now approaching evening quickly. We definitely had the momentum then, but we knew we still had work to get done. Nice behind the back dribble by Thornton, but his shot needed a little help. That's where Nolan Townsend gave it a little hand. The tip in put the Eagles up four, 60 to 56. Yoshur had the answer on the other end with this long range three to cut it to 60, 59. But back came Geneva and it was time to work it back down low to Jones who scored with 139 to play, giving the Eagles a 62, 59 lead. Geneva would increase their lead to 64, 59 as Townsend drives and is fouled. The field goal did not count, but he did sink both free throws as Geneva had a five-point lead. But back came Barron Academy. Yanni Schiff again for three. Wow, talk about clutch. Then, following a defensive stand, the Stars put the ball back in the hands of their big man, and Yoshur not only scored the bucket, but he was fouled, sinking the free throw to give Barron Academy a 65-64 lead with under a minute to play in the fourth overtime. Now, with just under 20 seconds to go, Geneva forces a turnover. Check out the shot from the baseline by Thornton, giving the Eagles a 66-65 lead. But Barron had the answer from the charity stripe as Joe Schur was fouled, sank both free throws for a 67-66 Stars lead. Time winding down inside 10 seconds, and it's Thornton again, weaving his way through traffic for the go-ahead shot, 68-67. Barron Academy did not waste any time. Forget the timeout, it was showtime. Clock winding down on the stars. Andy Katz with the pass inside to Ratcliffe, but the horn sounds as the ball bounces out. Bernie Geneva wins it, 68-67. It was still daylight, by the way, outside. No rescheduling for Saturday. You know, honestly, both teams showed fight. You know, a no-quit attitude. Uh, you know, we're down first, first overtime. We come back tied up. Second overtime, we're down again. We come back, tie it up. Third overtime, I think we're ahead. They come back, tie it up. And then fourth overtime, it's just, it was, it was just a battle back and forth. They didn't want to quit and, and lose it. We didn't want to quit and lose it. I told our kids, I said, we left our heart on the floor. It came down to that. It was like tear games. <laughs> Ridiculously crazy. <laughs> our fans got us through it. That was the ebb and flow. I mean, <laughs> it was uh, exhausting. Definitely, uh, I'd never been in a game that long. It's just real up and down, um, emotionally taxing on you because. I thought we were going to win about twice, and they came back big at the end, so it was really tough. That I, I'm glad that we, we uh, got the W at the end. Now, believe it or not, Robert Barron Academy out of Houston has actually played in a quadruple overtime game before, and it happened this season. Actually, this is our second uh, quadruple overtime game this year. We had one earlier in the season in the tournament uh, at, at our school. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we won an overtime last game, so, I mean, we're we're a team that if we get down or if we get up, just play. Uh, we've prided ourselves on having that that fight in us and just playing until the very end. And you know, to get here, we played an overtime game. So we're no stranger to extra basketball. And you know, we, we battled as hard as we could. And I told them at the end of the day, you know, that's all you can do. We, we have a lot of heart. It hurts, but we're, we're proud of what we did. Going to the Final Four back-to-back -back years is pretty, Coach keeps saying it's impressive. So I'm going to agree with him. I mean, 
I love this team and they're like my brothers and I'd do anything for them. The seniors that we have, let us all year, our best players, they're unbelievable. They played so hard. I just can't put it in words. I'm so proud of them, I'm so proud of the whole team. And I'm so thankful that we have the best coach in Coach Cole. In Fort Worth at the TAP State Semifinals, Jeff Power, Max Prep Sports, your leader in online sports content.